representatives from MassDOT and the MBTA that we are um, introducing for this capital plan this year. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how um, the capital investment plan that we produce um, aligns with the state transportation improvement program, which is another uh, plan that we work on for MassDOT and the MBTA that governs our federal funding. Um, and finally, we're going to talk a little bit about how we how to use and explore the capital investment plan, talk a little bit about our interactive format. Um, we'll highlight for you the remaining uh, public meetings that have been scheduled, and we are looking at the end of the um, presentation for your feedback on this draft plan and your thoughts about whether we got it right or not. So I thought we'd start by just talking a little bit about, for the benefit of folks, what is a capital investment plan? So it's our annually produced budget and policy document where we program all of our state and federal funds that we use and receive for our long-term improvements to our transportation network. Um, it is the one plan that includes all the investments across all of MassDOT and all of the MBTA. So it includes all of our investments in our roadways, our bridges, bridges, our bicycle and pedestrian facilities, uh, the purchase of new transit vehicles, um, our improvements to our uh, commuter rail stations and our subway stations, investments that our aeronautics division makes in our public use airports that are not controlled by mass, mass port, and then investments in our rail freight network throughout the Commonwealth, as well as the Registry of Motor Vehicles. With the 2017 capital investment plan, we introduced a new framework built around three main priorities, reliability, modernization, and expansion as shown in the graphic on the right. Um, reliability is what we consider uh, maintaining and improving investments that maintain and improve our existing transportation network. Um, the modernization takes those investments uh, a bit further. So it's not only just investing to improve the uh, making the same type of um, roadway uh, improvements, it is taking that to the next level. It's also investments that add a, a different, um, so if you do a roadway reconstruction project, you might add a, a sidewalk or a bicycle facility. So it's not just repaving the road, it's making the road more accessible for a multimodal transportation uh, mode. Um, and then expansion, is taking that is expanding the um, capacity of our network as well as adding new facilities that we did not have previously. So under a reliability program, uh, some of the types of uh, programs that we invest in would be our bridge highway bridge program, um, our interstate pavement program, to name a few. Under the modernization category. Uh, the MBTA has been doing an awful lot of work to transform and improve the red and orange lines as well as the green line. Um, and in the expansion category, we invest um, heavily in providing new bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure and new uh, facilities as well as our uh, funding of the South Coast Rail Program to bring service, rail service down to the South Coast as well as the green line extension out to Medford and Somerville. Um, underneath each of the priorities, um, there are a number of projects that get selected and prioritized annually for funding, as you can see in the chart below. So in line with last year's capital investment plan, we are continuing this year with what we're calling a maintenance of effort approach for the 2022 CIP. It's uh, something that we had discussed at length with the administration. There's still a lot of uncertainty with respect to what can we expect out of Washington, we need a federal surface uh, reauthorization bill for what we're calling our federal surface transportation authorization. Um, there has been talk, as many have heard, for a federal infrastructure funding bill, and the nature of the new funding that we might get is still yet unknown. Um, and obviously, we are still seeing, even though we're going um, now lifting the um, state of emergency in June, we're still seeing that there are effects on the overall transportation network and we need to understand how people are using our transportation network and what are the demands gonna be in the future and are we making the right capital investments. So for this capital plan, we wanna continue 
investing in what we already had underway, what we had already planned to start for 2022. We will continue the support for our major ongoing capital programs for the GLX and South Coast Rail and other multi-year projects. Um, and we are including some targeted new investments to advance our, advance our goals and priorities as what we're gonna talk about in another slide. Um, the emphasis is really on building a strong foundation so we can take advantage of the future funding opportunities and the new funds that become available in the Commonwealth. Both on the MassDOT side and on the MBTA side, the teams are really focused on the execution and optimization of our capital program and ensuring that we are taking advantage of every opportunity that comes our way. So one of the things we decided to set out for ourselves this year is to really articulate what are the goals for our capital investment plan. We have really have a, a goal to deliver a more strategic and what we're calling performance-based capital plan. And that we're having all of the planning efforts that we have done over the past few years influence, inform, and drive what we're trying to invest in in our transportation network. And when we mean a about performance-based CIP, we're really talking about what are the outcomes? What are we trying to achieve? So have the goals and objectives of many of the plans that we put in place in our asset management plans that we have for MassDOT and um, the MBTA drive, what are those outcomes? Um, we want to build a capital program that really does reflect our multimodal strategy and connects our investments across our mode. So as I mentioned, a roadway project, you might not just pay for roadway, you're going to add a sidewalk, you'll add a bike lane. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll be doing transit connections, bike and pedestrian connections to our transit facilities. Um, we want to link the MBTA network with the RTA network. These are the kinds of things that we are looking at and using to drive our capital programs. We also need to do a better job, and we recognize this, of, to communicate to the general public or what are the investments that are included in our capital program and share how they benefit all parts of the Commonwealth, the modes and the many different constituent groups that benefit from our transportation investments. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the MBTA, even though um, <clears throat> we are in <laughs> Um, Northern Middlesex and um, Merrimack Valley this evening, and there's not as much focus or investments from the MBTA in this part of the Commonwealth, it's still important for everyone to understand that the MBTA um, has significant investment principles that are driving what they're investing in this year. There is a significant portion of the mass, overall MassDOT capital plan, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how, they're, how they've approached this year's capital plan development. So they're continuing to prioritize and invest in their, what we call steady state asset replacement and modernization. They have a number of upgrades to the revenue vehicle fleet, um, including procurement of a new uh, electric hybrid buses uh, for the silver line. They're overhauling their uh, commuter rail locomotives and they're funding an ongoing program to replace the vehicles that support the ride service. Um, they have a uh, bridge and tunnel program, which is under reliability. So uh, there's one of the projects that's highlighted here is the replacement of the Gloucester drawbridge, which has caused challenges uh, for the MBTA service. They're installing automatic train control on the north side of the commuter rail system. Um, and they're doing, they're completing the Braintree and Qu Quincy Adams garage rehabilitation. They're also continuing to invest in, as I said before, in a number of major in-flight capital programs. The Green Line Extension, um, which should start to uh, begin revenue service by the end of this calendar year, 2021. They're continuing with the construction of the commuter rail uh, service down to New Bedford and Fall River. And they're investing, as I mentioned earlier, in the transformation of the red and orange line through the um, investments in new vehicles, new um, infrastructure investments in their yards and signals that will all support the transformation of that service. And they're continuing with the um, implementation of fare transformation to um, <clears throat> implement a new way of uh, collecting fares on all of their uh, transit facilities. So as well, they're also setting themselves up to take advantage of the new funding that we anticipate will be coming out of Washington. Um, they're also they're working on the design and construction of the Quincy bus facility so that it will be able to support the future 
of the battery electric buses. And I know that that will help the Commonwealth move towards achieving the long-term goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. They're investing in bus priority infrastructure and passenger amenities. And they're, uh, they're also continuing their investments in the planning to support rail transformation and what that might mean for the future of the commuter rail service throughout the Commonwealth. They're working on the completion of the Leachmere Viaduct and they're also working on the Green Line transformation, which has been in the paper as of late. I wanted to pivot a little bit and talk about the transportation bond bill that I'm sure some of you have heard about. Governor Baker signed this bond bill in January of this year. It's a new $16.2 billion trans bill that authorizes our uh, funding over the next four or five years. Um, within the uh, bill, bill itself, there were a number of new programs and funding that were authorized that really will help address the asset conditions and congestion at the, at the local level and will also enhance pedestrian transit asset, asset access, as well as improve the condition of the MassDOT highway bridges. So for this capital plan in 2022, we are including spending and in three new programs that were not in last year's capital plan. So we're launching a municipal pavement program this year um, that was focused on addressing the pavement condition for the municipally owned state routes. This is something that we have heard about from the municipalities that their chapter 90 funds are not necessarily sufficient to help fund um, the pavement condition on the existing roads. This program will su supplement and support <clears throat> the existing uh, municipal partnership programs that we have. We've programmed 15 million in spending. It's 100 million authorization in the transportation bond bill. We're also launching, formally launching with the um, Shared Streets and Spaces program. We did actually launch it in 2020 in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we used existing authorization that we had under the highway division, but within the transportation bond bill, it received its own authorization. So we're we're funding, continuing to fund that program. We'll be spending $4 million. We anticipate spending $4 million um, in 2022. And this is a program that really helps uh, municipalities meet their needs for safer um, outdoor recreation, commerce, and community activities. A number of communities created little parklets, took advantage of uh, you know, extending sidewalks and curbs to um, to have outdoor dining, et cetera. So it was a very successful program. Uh, we issued, I think about almost 30 million in grants in 2021. So um, a lot of communities benefited from that program. Um, the third program that we're launching this year is really an outcome of the congestion, report to the governor on the congestion in the Commonwealth that, we, that was issued in 2019. This program provides funding uh, for cities and towns that to be able to address sort of localized operationally influenced bottlenecks that negatively impact um, traffic flow. Um, you could restripe, uh, do lane or shoulder widths. Again, we're developing the program uh, parameters. It will be launched um, at the municipal level. And we're gonna fund that at two and a half million dollars this year. It had a $25 million authorization in the bond bill. Finally, the last new program that we're including, it's not really a program, it's actually new funding, is um, the bond bill authorized 1.25 billion in new grant anticipation notes that can be, that will be used by MassDOT Highway Division to improve the condition of the bridges on our national highway system across the Commonwealth. We have a long-term target that we're trying to achieve over the next number several years to get our bridge deck condition to less than 10% in poor condition. So this funding will really be used to help supplement the existing federal funding that we get today um, to, to put more dollars to, to work to improve the condition of the bridges. So the um, it's akin to the accelerated bridge program that we launched, I think back in 2009 it was about a $3 billion program that improved a number of bridges and tackled the mega bridges. This program is intended to really uh, work on the smaller bridges throughout the Commonwealth and maybe bundle uh, a number of bridges together to get them done. Um, all of these projects um, 
will be added to our state transportation improvement program as required because they will be federal, uh, fed funded with our federal highway funds through a federal highway reimbursement program. Currently have about almost $500 million programmed in the 2022 CIP to um, improve the conditions of the bridge network throughout the Commonwealth with $15 million included as this new GANS funding. As I mentioned at the beginning, I wanted to talk a little bit about the State Transportation Improvement Program. That's the second plan that we work on um, at the same time as we're building the capital investment plan. So the State Transportation Program, or STIP as it's known, is a federally required plan that really governs all of our federal highway investments and our Federal Transit Administration uh, grant awards for MassDOT and for the MBTA and the regional transit authorities. So it's really dedicated, the federal funds that are dedicated to our roadway and transit projects. It is subject to federal approval, um, unlike the CIP, which is only subject to our board approval. Um, and it's constrained by the federal fiscal year, which is slightly different than the state fiscal year. The federal fiscal year runs October 1st through September 30th of every year. So um, <clears throat> it includes all of our federal aid projects that are programmed by our 10 metropolitan planning organizations and our three rural transportation um, planning organizations in Massachusetts. And I will talk in another slide a little bit about the role of the MPOs and the TPOs in the development of the STIP. So it's an obligation-based document, meaning that the funds are programmed for a particular project and the CIP reflects how that spending um, occurs over, over one year or over multiple years. And, I, and one thing to note is that all the projects that are included in the CIP um, are also in the STIP. So it's a very large subset as the, the circle diagram on the bottom um, illustrates. It's a very large subset of the CIP. And as I mentioned, it is being done, uh, developed concurrently with the 2022 CIP and the STIP has also been relief, released for public comment um, Tuesday. So the small circle on the bottom is really all of the state, um, the, the state transportation improvement and all the 13 tips for highway and transit make up the small circle. And then the middle circle is the other federal funds encompass all the other federal funds that we receive in the Commonwealth. So the Aeronautics Division of MassDOT receives a federal um, aviation administration grants. And we also get for um, MassDOT rail and for the MBTA federal rail administration, railroad administration grants together, those comprise all the federal funds. And then the larger circle comprises the rest of the funding that the Commonwealth receives um, to invest in our transportation network. So this um, little map of Massachusetts sort of illustrates all of our 13 um, MP, all of our 13 MPOs and TPOs. So the black um, ones for Franklin County, Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket are our TPOs, our rural transportation planning organizations and um, the blue are the remainder 10 uh, metropolitan planning organizations. So those, uh, the MPOs and the TPOs are really a transportation policy and decision-making body. And they have a, they're composed of local and state officials that really play uh, such a critical role in developing the STIP. They um, <clears throat> receive federal funding, federal formula funds, and the MPOs and TPOs annually review and select eligible projects with the funding uh, for funding with their allocation of those federal funds. And each year they produce an annual five-year transportation improvement program and collectively all the 13 TIPs and are com combined together to comprise the STIP. And those are all those projects that have been selected and prioritized by the MPOs and the TPOs um, <clears throat> are then uh, included as part of the federally funded portion of the CIP. So um, as I mentioned, um, the draft STIP is out for public comment and the MPOs and TPOs are in, in the process of releasing or endorsing their draft tips at this point in time through their public meetings. So this year on our CIP website, we included under the um, engaging local and regional public officials, regional officials tab, 
Um, you can access the information about the MPOs and TPOs, their websites and their meeting schedules. And we provided some information to show, to illustrate how the um, STIP and the CIP align. So we hope folks will check that out. It's under mass.gov slash CIP, engaging local and regional officials. This year's capital plan, we have a four, about $4 billion programmed for 2022. Uh, about 50% of that is on the MassDOT side and 50% of that is on the MBTA side. Um, as the chart on the left, the donut as we like to call it, illustrates um, how it is arrayed from a priority standpoint. About 45% of our investments uh, fall into the reliability category with another 20 27% in modernization category. So collectively between reliability and modernization, which has been the focus of our investments over the last several years, it's about three quarters of our capital plan with 17% representing our um, investments in the expansion like uh, Green Line Extension and South Coast Rail in the bicycle and pedestrian facilities. And then 5% in for chapter 90, which is at 200 million and another 5% for uh, supporting the planning efforts, including the planning efforts for uh, our MPO and TPO partners. Um, the graph on the top <clears throat> just arrays the spending by division. And as you can see the lion's share of the funding because of the amount of federal funds that are received goes to highway and the MBTA and the rest of the divisions are have uh, also received funding more from the state funds than from the federal funds. And so overall, we're about a $370 million increase over last year's capital investment plan for this year. So there's a lot of projects in the capital investment plan, but we wanted to give um, present a flavor of some of the projects that are in the um, Middlesex, uh, not, uh, min, sorry, Merrimack Valley, Northern Middlesex region. I apologize for being tongue tied. Um, just to give you a sense of some of the projects that we've included for capital investments this year for funding. And this is not an exhaustive list in, in the region. It's just a highlight of some of the projects that we pulled out of the capital investment plan to give you a flavor of the types of things that are included for this year. So there's a project that the aeronautics division, a couple of projects that the aeronautics division has at Lawrence Municipal Airport. And then on the highway side, we, we have a bridge replacement in um, Haverhill and another bridge replacement in Beaver Brook. Um, there's a community trail in um, Groveland. Um, there's another uh, rail trail in Newburyport. We're rebuilding the Lord, uh, Lord Overpass in um, Lowell. Uh, I've included the Regional Transit Authority funding uh, for Lowell and for Merrimack Valley. Um, most of their investments go to replacement of buses and support vehicles, and then preventive maintenance and facility replacement um, for those um, RTAs also. And just give everybody a flavor for some of the investments that um, the MPTA is making this year um, for 2022. This just sort of is the top 10 projects that they have in their capital plan for this year with Green Line Extension and South Coast Trail obviously being uh, big investments that are included in their capital plan. Um, we have the funding, the total FY22 funding listed here for them, which is $1.2 billion. And then the total authorized budget for those projects is $6.5 billion. So substantial investments in the transportation network being made by the MBTA. I won't go through this list. And, um, the highlighted circles are the different modes. So as you can see, the green line is obviously green and the commuter rail is purple and the red and orange line are red and orange respectively. So this should just give you a flavor of what um, the T has programmed for this capital investment plan. So the other thing that is important to note, this is we publish the CIP as a virtual story map but we also provide a PDF version, downloadable version on our website. And the virtual story map gives the users an opportunity to really interact with the CIP com content and also allows embedded in the CIP virtual story map is a online comment tool that allows the public to comment on specific projects or just submit a general comment if they choose. Um, so 
And the other thing this year, like last year, in lieu of in-person public meetings, we've organized six uh, virtual regional public meetings that at like tonight are being held with participation of our um, metropolitan planning organizations. Uh, our rural TPOs also participate. So we've already gone through an overview of the CIP and the focus on the 2022 investments. We'll take comment on the investments that are, are shown, that were shown tonight or any or anticipated to be done in the Northern Middlesex or Merrimack Valley region, or take a comment on any aspect of the capital plan. We do encourage and we welcome any feedback that we can get. Um, but I do wanna point out that there are a couple ways that projects advance in the capital plan. There's a, the MassDOT and MBTA have a lot of local planning and prioritization processes, processes that where the public can participate but the MPOs and the TPOs also have a planning and prioritization process that where the public can participate and they have a um, very um, <clears throat> robust public participation uh, plan for each of the MPOs and TPOs. Um, this is just a highlight of the upcoming meetings. Tonight we're here, we're at Northern Middlesex and Merrimack Valley. Tomorrow night, there's a discussion with, at Central Mass with uh, Central Mass in the Massachusetts region. And then next week, we have Boston, Southeastern Mass, and the Cape and the Islands. As I mentioned, um, the CIP comment tool is embedded in the CIP online story map. There's a link here. We'll be posting this um, presentation on our website. We do accept email, so comments can be um, emailed to us at masscipstate.ma.us. And we also take letters, so you can send in a physical letter if you wish. Um, we do encourage the public to participate um, and engage in municipal leaders about your priorities for transportation projects. As our financial picture becomes clear, we expect to launch a revamped five-year uh, capital planning process and hopefully with the start of the 2023-2027 capital plan. So we do wanna hear from folks about priorities an interest for projects going forward or what you think we should be investing in. The public comment period will stay open until June 14th. So we started it yesterday, it will stay open until June 14th. So I just wanna let folks know you have time to comment. You don't have to comment tonight, but we do encourage you to send your comments in. And this is just a um, screenshot of what the CIP comment tool looks like. And we are pleased with it. We've done an awful lot of work to enhance the uh, search capabilities of this tool. Um, users can filter by projects by the MassDOT division or by a municipality or an MPO region. You can even put it in your own address and view nearby projects. So it's a robust tool. We're interested in hearing what folks think about it. Um, and this is the link for where the comment tool is, but it is embedded in the online um, <clears throat> story map and also in the PDF document it also provides the, the link to the comment tool. Um, as I mentioned, public participation is really critical to us um, in informing what we should be investing in um, and helping us meet the transportation needs in the Commonwealth. So we do share um, comments on existing projects with our project managers and those are taken into account as the project is developed or actually implemented. Um, comments that support and support of future projects that aren't yet programmed are also shared with our stakeholders to note the level of public interest in the project. Uh, we received quite a bit of interest. I'll just I'll just tell a, um, a brief story about a project that we added into um, the Franklin County Regional uh, Franklin County's. Uh, Regional Council of Government last yesterday actually to, into their tip was the um, suicide prevention barriers on the French King Bridge that had been uh, a project that had been commented on for a number of years. Uh, the design has finally advanced to the point that uh, we could make the decision to incorporate and assign funding for that project and that has been added into their federal tip which will be in the final CIP. So public comment is important. It gets a project programmed um, into the CIP. Um, we encourage comments and support of specific CIP programs because we'll use those to help drive our next year's investments and set our next year's 
five-year priorities. As I said, we hope to launch a five-year um, capital planning effort uh, as we get more information from our folks in Washington. And then overall um, comments just help shape the way we set our investment priorities and select the projects that we include for investment in the capital plan. And you know, we wanna try to communicate as best we can the progress of our capital investments to the public and to the extent that you have um, thoughts on how well we're doing on that or not, you know, we'd appreciate hearing that also. So um, just to reiterate where you can find the capital investment plan, the website for the um, capital investment plan is at mass.gov slash mass.slash CIP. And the online comment tool is here. And it's embedded within the online story map and embedded within the PDF that you can also download. If, if folks want to send a letter, they should send a comment letter. They should send it to mass.legislative Legislative and Public Affairs, 10 Park Plaza, Room 4160, Boston, Mass 02116. And we thank you for listening to the presentation tonight. We're happy to take any comments. Hi, Michelle. Uh, before we get to the public comment section, just wanted to, I saw uh, we had Representative Michelle Socolo here. I'm going to ask her to unmute now and, and say a few words if she'd like. Thank you, um, Patrick, and thank you, Michelle, for this fantastic presentation. I am uh, Representative Michelle Socolo, and I represent the 15th Middlesex District. Uh, parts of Woburn, which is in this area, this region, but also Lexington, which is in the Boston MPO region. Uh, and I really primarily came tonight to listen and to get a sense of what was going on. Um, I, I have a lot of interest and concern about our transportation system and know that you all face a daunting challenge as you try to make priorities across the Commonwealth of what we were going to spend our money on. Um, I just, a couple of quick comments. Um, I didn't see anything, uh, maybe I missed it, maybe I missed the slide, but I didn't see anything mentioned about the Complete Streets program. And I hope that that will be continued in a robust fashion. Um, I am also, um, I also firmly believe that we need and have not for many years increased the allocation to cities and towns through the chapter 90 program. I know you hear that from legislators a lot, but as a person who spent 25 years in local government and also um, formerly wore the uh, hat of, as president of MA for three terms, um, I try to look at things both statewide, but also you know in, in a micro local level. And the vast majority of our, our streets are owned and managed by cities and towns. And as a bike and pedestrian proponent, that's one of the biggest ways that we can expand our multimodal um situation by improving our local roads and i worry a little bit as we begin to have more and more autonomous vehicles that one of the things that they primarily use to guide themselves is the lines on the roads and even that most basic maintenance will potentially save a lot of lives and cars not veering off the road and killing bikes and pedestrians so um it is something that i think is extremely important um for all the modes of mobility. And I'd love to see more emphasis on first mile, last mile connections to transit. This is an area that I've developed some legislation in and um, I really believe that we are not going to solve um, the issues we have with respect to meeting our Global Warming Solutions Act targets are getting to net zero goals by 2050 without getting more people onto the transit system. And my district in particular is a great case in point. We have six or seven access points to commuter rail or rapid transit within 10 minutes of every corner of my district, but almost nobody uses it because there's either not any parking at the train stations or there's no ground transportation from um, the dense neighborhoods and dense uh, business zones to those train stations. So better coordination um, on, on those first mile, last mile connections, I think is absolutely vital. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of time. I'm interested in sound barriers since I have four major highways in my district. Um, I'd love to know if there's going to be funding, um, any kind of a set aside for that. And then later on, I'd love to follow up with all of you about what's going on with Alewife since I know there's been some studies um 
and I know that those studies were due out during the pandemic and I hadn't heard anything further. It's obviously something of critical importance to my district. So I really just want to thank you all for your work um, and for this great plan. And I will follow up with a letter of some sort. Patrick, can I just respond quickly? Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much for your comments. And I just wanted to read, just comment on one thing because I was remiss in my presentation. We are funding, completing the Complete Streets program. That is continuing. Terrific, so glad. As, to as well as a small bridge program as part of our partnership with our municipalities. Terrific. All right, thank you, Representative. Um, so now I will turn it over to the public comment uh, portion of tonight's event. Uh, if just as a reminder, you can use the raised hand function um, and we will unmute you there. Uh, so I see one right now. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Absolutely, yes. Oh, great. This is uh, Betsy Goodrich. I'm a transportation planner for the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission. And I just wanted to thank you also for that um, presentation. It was actually was very thorough and interesting. Um, I did want to note just a one. Um, we noticed that the Clipper City Rail Trail project is on the CIP, and we had removed that off of our tip because it's being um, funded through the Municipal Vulnerability Program. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. And we were also interested to see that moving of the layover facility in Haverhill was on there. We hadn't heard that before, but, um, and that's all I have for you. Everything else looks great. Thank you. All right, thank you, Betsy. Um, does anyone else? You can use the raise hand function or send in the chat and we'll read it there. All right, well, uh, seeing no further public comments, um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Once, uh, oop, here we go. Uh, Representative Chicolo, will the legislator receive a briefing on the CIP? Uh, we will certainly, we can certainly put that together. I had sent some emails and, and briefings out uh, or information out like that, but we'll certainly, uh, I can get back to you on that. So, um, all right, uh, thank you once again, everybody for joining us here tonight. Um, as a reminder, this uh, the public comment period is open until June 14th uh, and to uh, submit any public comments you'd like to submit, you can go to mass.gov slash CIP. You can uh, email us at masscip at state.ma.us or you can send in a physical letter uh, to Mass. Legislative and Public Affairs, 10 Park Plaza, Room 4160, Boston, MA 02116. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, that will conclude tonight's uh, meeting. Thank you. <laughs>